contemplating my ancestral roots based on the shape of my toes while listening to Buffy St. Marie. Groundhogs existed in song long before I ever witnessed one watching Sesame Street almost every day till I was five and my parents threw out the TV. She played the mouth harp and I thought it strange that she was called Buffy, but loved her son's name, Dakota Star Blanket Wolfchild. My grandmother is 90 years old and lives in Canton, a paper mill town in the mountains of North Carolina. She told me the story of my indigenous great-great-grandmother who married an immigrant great-great-grandfather in Big Stone Gap, Virginia. I've lived in these hills long enough to call them home, but tend to forget too much of where we might have crossed oceans to arrive from Scottish stones, Irish dances, complicated Welsh tales. I wish I'd studied Greek instead of Latin when I was only the second generation to go to college. My toes say I'm Greek. Maybe my ninth cousin, thrice removed, hung out on the beaches with Sappho. I hope there were harps or, later, the lilt of a Celtic fiddle whistle pig, drag of a double-ended knucklebone bodron. Want to study those symphonies with the green blood of my serpentine arteries. My toes grasp wood and chuck it fairly accurately across spring snow at the groundhog trying to reach the grass that is warmed or not warmed by the sun as I stride towards the stream early in the year before my feet acclimate to the sharper stones. It is one fine way to feel alive. <laughs>